Hi everybody, it's Roxana with Garden of Herbs TX. And I'm out here on my patio again, and I thought I would um, just talk to you about another great culinary herb. And today I had just um, got another good um, potted plant. I'm using it as a potted plant. It's sage. And many of you know this, great herb um, or some of you may be already because it's summertime have this growing in your garden it's sage and sage is i have two of these i have one over there um, in my garden right now and i went out to do some shopping and they had some sage already growing and, and they were very inexpensive so i bought two and i just planted this. I'm going to try to grow this in my kitchen. So I got me a clay pot here and I just um, wanted to just kind of see if I could see that. That's a beautiful potted plant. It's a clay pot and I got two of these growing and I'm just going to have it growing there in my kitchen. And I thought because I had did the other video on rosemary and all the brain benefits that it has um, for our memory just to do a little uh, quick recap this also um, sage um, officinalis it helps with brain the the brain and the, and the memory as well I'm not going to go quite as deep into um, how good it is for the brain but it is good for the brain it's good for the um, relieving and removing the oxidative stress in the brain. It is good in that same um, fashion and relieving the oxidative stress. So you want to incorporate this into your diet. You know, it's kind of sad to me. I was really getting ready for this video and I remember, um, brings back a lot of memories um, in my family and I'm sure you will have some memories in your family if you're a sage user. Um, mother used to always uh, really go overboard with the sage um, every year for Thanksgiving. Um, we, um, I used to say, you know, for stuffing or for, I don't know if you call it stuffing or if you call it, um, I forget the other name, we, we always called it stuffing. Uh, before we quit stuffing the bird, but um, um, I used to say, Mom, could you go kind of light on the sage? Because Mother used to put like a lot of uh, sage. You could smell sage as you walk through the door. And um, she would say, you know, well, I love sage. So she would put twice the amount it would call for. So if she loved it, she doubled up on whatever she loved. <laughs> and um, when uh, she got ready, uh, we didn't know she was going to be called home, but um, she wanted to give me her recipe because we always made her do the stuffing or, you know, um, what I don't know what other people call it, but we called it stuffing. So uh, she said, um, now I'm not making it this year. You have to learn how to make it. So I made the stuffing that year and um, I made sure that I cut the uh, recipe down on the sage. I used half of what she used. It's still just as good. Um, but this is so medicinal. Um, a lot of people don't know. They think it's just a kitchen herb that you use once a year. You go buy it, you know. But I'm going to go over some of the wonderful qualities um, and the benefits of sage. So you might want to get it out and put it to the front of your spice rack instead of in the back where you have to search for it because there are some great benefits to sage. Number one, it's an antibacterial. It's an, and, and being an antibacterial, you'll think to yourself, sage is an antibacterial. It's also an anti-inflammatory, which is really big nowadays. Anything that's an anti-inflammatory, you really want to use it like every week, um, multiple times. It, you know, if you love sage, you can just 
pick it up and just start eating it because it's so flavorful. It's a decongestant, which means if it's a decongestant, that's going to be good for colds and flus. It's going to be good for coughs. And I've got something coming up. And it's a vulnerary. So, like, if you have something going on and you're trying to get off the sugar and you think to yourself, you know, my feet are starting to itch. Got something coming up. Okay. It helps with athlete's foot. Yeah. It does. It helps with your allergies. It helps with colds, cuts, scrapes, sore throats. Yes, it helps with sore throats. And all this stuff, when I was doing some studying on it, and this was in my book when I was going to school, I could not believe sage. It's been there all the time, and I've just been passing through it, you know, um, trying to go get prescriptions from the doctors when it's right there in front of me. God has provided us a pathway to healing right here. Yes. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, you know, sitting in the pharmacy line and just waiting for some cough medicine. When the doctor tells me, really, they don't have anything. You know, you could use a tablespoon of honey and you can use garlic or you can use sage. I mean, whatever. I mean, God has provided everything for us right here in the garden. <laughs> So you want to get, and um, you can either email me at gardenofherbstx at gmail.com or um, you just write this down. Your recipe is you want one quart of water and you want four tablespoons of dried sage or you can grow your own like this and just get you some leaves that are mature enough, cut it up. You can dry this really easy for a couple of days and then cut it up, put it in a jar and make sure that, that it's tight. And then when you get, when you get ready, I mean, you can uh, put it, your four tablespoons, anybody's got four tablespoons and then um, put it in a quart and then you can, um, you know, you have it right there. Um, it's called salvia officinalis is the proper word for and this is an infusion of your sage and how to make it is you put the water and sage in a pot of water with the lid on and then you bring it to a slow simmer um, you uh, turn the heat on for about an hour and you want it to go for a slow simmer because you're going to heat, heat it for an hour. You want to make sure you keep an eye on it. And then you use, you after you turn your fire off, leave it on there for a while to, to cool down. Um, you uh, put your mesh strainer, you strain out your herb, your sage, and then um, you can drink that. Um, you can um, gargle with it. You know if you have some phlegm or some sore throat but you can also put a cold rag in there um, after it gets cooled off you can use it for your throat just lay on top of your throat you can put honey in there and drink it um, whatever you want to do you can also drink it hot if that's what you want but you can reheat it if um, you need to and um, you can put it in the refrigerator if that's um, you know, if you haven't drank it all, you can keep it overnight and reheat it if you're drinking it warm or hot. And yeah, I mean, sage tea is really, really very beneficial for you. The recipe for sage infusion that you can um, use as um, two cups a day for two days, um, you can drink it cold or hot. Um, you can add um, a tablespoon of salt for one cup of water and you can gargle with it three times a day for a sore throat. Um, you can use the steam inhalation. You can put a towel over your head and just sniff it, you know, really good um, for steam in your, in your nose and breathe it in through your mouth and um, it'll go down the back of your throat. Steam is really good for um, your face, your eyes, your throat you know, getting it all lubricated in the back of your throat. Um, it's, it's very comforting, but you also want to be very careful 
not to get it so the steam doesn't get so hot you know you don't want to get your face right down in there you want to get it at a comfortable distance so be very careful not to let your steam can actually burn you so be very careful um, your um, this is good for a runny nose it's good for um, children I, I never let the child get close to the stove I always put it in a bowl and I don't use plastic bowls I always put them at the table where they're away from the stove and I know that most parents understand that and know that but I always just throw that out there in case somebody is is uh, not thinking and they're stressed because they have lots of family members in the in the household and they're they're just sometimes it's gonna be very stressful when people are sick so anyway um, put the warm cloth in if you have a cut or a wound you can put the sage itself after it's not very hot onto the wound or you can put it in a cloth and put the cloth in the tea and then put it on there several times a day and you'll see that it's uh, not getting red and not getting infected because it's a it's an antiseptic it's a antibacterial I'm sorry it's an anti and, and plus the anti-inflammatory I was gonna say antiseptic but it's not it's an antibacterial so um, you can uh, this is uh, one that I really like because you know you go to the store and you're trying to find things to put on your feet for athlete's foot you know and you're trying to think of yourself you know mm, it's kind of my feet are itching well you can put the uh, leaves in your water to make it stronger but you're actually putting the tea and you can put um you can put just I mean, you could put the tea tree oil in there, but you could actually put this alone in there three times a day for a week to get rid of athlete's foot. I would put the leaves in there to make it really strong. And then uh, in a basin, you know, soak your feet. And uh, that's really good. That's really, really good. I just, I just think about all the benefits. And this is just a quick video. It's nothing like, telling you everything that sage is good for because sage is really good for a lot more i wanted to go over real quickly and let you know about um sage does not like to have wet feet just like rosemary rosemary is um, like the free flowing and sage does too sage is really easy to grow in um i think it's zones four through eight and you might even get by with it in zone nine it just kind of depends on where you are, are in zone nine but here in texas um it loves to be out in sun um, like i said before you can always burn a plant up if you get it too hot but it likes to be in the sun i don't i've gone like at least four or five times a week with this because you do have to you do have to get this some water um, I might can go by because this is not an evergreen type plant but um, this this one will let you know like hey water me I'm looking sad over here but this one has to have some sun and um, the best thing to do if you want to preserve your herbs is go out and cut this and it will start bushing like almost like your basil you can cut you can dry this and cut this or and you can use it as a dried herb or you can even take it as a fresh herb cut it and then put it in your ashtrays with some olive oil or butter and you can even mix this with some of your other herbs and put it in ashtrays with butter you can make pesto out of this with some other herbs and have a pesto recipe with basil with thyme with garlic um, you know, there's all kinds of things that you could do with this in cooking instead of just making it one herb. You can use this as a combination herb. And then when it comes time, you know, I've even used it with, in my ashtrays with water. And then I have it as a fresh herb and you know, I don't keep it in there over six months or anything like that. And then I sprinkle a little bit of salt in there as a preservative. 
I've used lemon juice and water and salt and then I get it out and I've got it there for a sore throat or for whatever I need it for or I just use it in there with some of my cooking. Anyway, that's all for now. This is Rexana with Garden of Herbs. Please like, share, and uh, subscribe to this kind of content if you like it. And please let me know how you use sage. And hey, by the way, go to the back of your cabinet and pull sage out and start using it because I know you're probably going to be like me. I, for years, left sage in the back of my cabinet until I started finding out that I could do more with sage than just once a year, okay? <laughs> okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. This is Rexena saying, get your sage out. Okay, bye-bye.